Hey, what's up guys? I'm Ray Torn and welcome back to Crusader Kings 3 as we are playing as the Castor Dead Dynasty with the Legends of the Dead expansion. Alright, so last episode we increased our territory by a little bit. We got uh, this guy here as a vassal and conquered one county. So we'll need to continue to expand in today's episode and I think the best option would be to conquer this guy rather than just accept him becoming a vassal. We're not very powerful and so I don't like the idea of bringing somebody in who has this county and the two the two baronies. And so I think it'd be easier to conquer him, especially that we have all these powerful vassals at the moment. And he's really weak. However, we can't take advantage of that weakness because we actually lack the piety because he is in fact a Muslim. So that would require us to spend that 63 piety and we only have 45 at the moment. Maybe we'll get a decision or something that will increase it. I don't know. Well, yes, I did forget, so I guess we'll read this event here. I wanted to show you guys two things that I did neglect to point out, two new things uh, that I didn't point out last episode, given I didn't want to spend the entire video looking at new mechanics, uh, but we'll, we'll take a look at them in, in today's video. But first, we got this spouse event, the guard. I'm a little confused as to why my Amara wants to present a grand gift to me in the courtyard. I soon understand, however, as... I have no idea how to pronounce that fool title there. Uh, Khadija orders a group of soldiers in the line, a complete regiment raised from my own lands ready to serve you. This is a grand gift. Okay, so we can say more troops to bolster the army, increasing our levy size, where they will serve as my personal guard, increasing our prowess. Well, this is for 10 years, while well, this one's for 12. I like the idea of increasing our prowess, though we're not very good to begin with, so I don't think that's going to help us much, honestly. You know what, I think we should just take the 5% for now. Yeah, I think that'll, you know, it's not a huge bonus, but it'll help us in the conflict, the upcoming war. By a little bit, anyway. Social manipulation, this event we've seen many times before. Uh, so we won't read through it here. Basically, we need to determine what is the best option for this unhappy vassal. Remember, he's just the equivalent of a, a mayor, essentially. And uh, we'll have three options here. We can say he shall have tasks which are impossible to complete. So we're guessing that he would do everything in his power to get the task done. He's calm, zealous, and compassionate. We can say all problems will be blamed on him. And so that you'd want to do this option if he wants people to think well of him. Yeah, I mean, maybe. Or comment on his shape of the legs and throw him off. And this is us guessing that he's been objectified due to his appearance. Nothing really to suggest that. I guess we'll go with this option here. All problems will be blamed on him. Let's see how well that goes. And that did get us our first diplomacy perk, which I still have not changed up uh, what we want to do on this branch. And so we can just keep on going here for now. We can even start on, on these, I guess. Yeah, I guess if we wanted to, because uh, if you're going to reset it, it's going to reset all of them. I'm trying to wait until we get an event that reduces stress. We should probably go on an activity. That would help us. Yeah, maybe we'll do that. Go on an activity to uh, get some stress reduction. Uh, but for now, let me go ahead and get this selected. And I think this one would be the most useful, though it only applied to one child. Because we only have the one child. Interestingly, our character is not having any children, which is crazy because when I played this character before, he was actually chased and he had like a whole troop of children. There's a bunch of them, despite being chased. All right, so that was successful, by the way. So we got a weak hook on him. Increased his opinion and now respects us. Respects our authority. Uh, I'm not sure what we'd do with that weak hook. Uh, this is one of those mechanics I wanted to show you guys. The Vizier mechanic. You could revoke his title, but again, it's it's not an actual barony title. It's like a city. And so, yeah, I don't think that's, yeah, it's not even beneficial to you. So, yeah, I, I don't think we'd do that. Well, you know, it does affect them once they're adults. I thought it would only affect them when they're children. Apparently not, because our son has just increased his marshal by three. All right, excellent. Well, our younger son has got one plus to his learning. So that's nice. I was thinking it was just if they were under age that they got that bonus. So 
So yes, the visiers. Uh, that was one of the ones I wanted to show you guys. You can appoint that here through your character screen. This does require prestige, quite a bit of it actually, 350, so all of the prestige we currently have. So we're not gonna do that at the moment just in case we need prestige for something. I just wanted to show that it is a possibility and I think there's some penalties to doing doing this because they're very corrupt, I think, is the, the idea that they're going to you know, take a little bit of money for themselves. Uh, but overall, I think it's it's also largely beneficial despite the, the negatives. And so we might want to go ahead and do that. I haven't actually tried this yet. So that was one of the two mechanics that I want to show you guys that is new. The other one is with the court physician. They've added some buttons here for their duties. I'd like to see these added to other minor court positions as well. Herodox stated that as of right now, none of them have it. They might look at giving some these duties, but I don't know. We'll have to see. They didn't say anything definitive on that. So this is his regular duties. And so this doesn't result in him getting any additional money, nor does he give you any additional bonuses. You can also have him control plagues. So that's uh, increased plague resistance and increased prestige. It's going to cost you 0.10 per month. You can instead spend that same amount to get the increased prestige. This is for the court position, by the way, not for your character. Um, but you would get the monthly lifestyle experience, so that's pretty helpful. And I think that's the one we're going to do. That's the one I've been leaving it on. Uh, or you can instead say, let me go with the Divine Charity and get monthly piety. Because we actually want to earn monthly piety, let's do that one just temporarily. Just so we can get the piety we need for this conflict here. And just let us get it a little bit quicker. So we'll do that and then we'll change them over to help us with our our uh, you know points here for the majesty focus. Blood and gold, line spot. So Manu and Issa's quarrels have proven injurious to the realm's finances. So these guys are still having trouble. Our son is a steward and this tax collector. Uh, neither wishes to correspond with the other and as a result payments are often overridden, misplaced, and even lost. As I grumble over this, I spy the pair's own contributions to the realm. How easy it would be to lose this sum and have each blame the other for its disappearance. So we could do that, and they will become rivals, and they'll both pay us 15 gold. But as a just character, he will gain some stress. We're trying to reduce our stress. Or say I should scold them for this oversight. And that would pacify them. I mean, 30 gold's helpful. We're going to roleplay this. Again, if we were doing a roleplay series, we'd have to pick this option. I'm actually just going to roleplay it just because. And we're going to go with this one. I think it fits our character and what we're trying to do a little bit more. So yeah, we're going to try and do this this conflict. I'm not going to spend the money because I don't know how expensive it's going to be overall. How long it's going to take to get him defeated. Once we see how much our army is costing us, maybe we'll spend that. Uh, construct a building, perhaps. So breaking fast with a friend. I'm on my way to the mosque one morning when I ran into Khadijah, who is carrying a small bag. Of course, that's our, our spouse. Uh, glancing around, she conspiratorially opens it, revealing all sorts of food and drink. It is such a beautiful day. Come join me outside for a morning picnic, she says. As I start to protesting that I'm on my way to the mosque, Khadijah interrupts me. Allah will still be there later, but these candied figs won't. So you say Allah is more important than breakfast. We'll gain a ton of piety if we do that. Lose opinion with our wife, though. Or say the true sin would be letting this opportunity pass. Increase opinion with her. Get the lovely picnic. So reduce some stress. And grow closer to forming a friendship with her. Hmm. She's our primary spouse here. I feel like the piety is a little bit more useful. And we're... I mean, we were going to the mosque. Like, <laughs> you don't just take a break from... Religion? So yeah, let's do this, guys. We'll go with this option. Get the piety. Very helpful. Well, now we can declare war immediately. And also, before I forget, because you know I will, let's go ahead and change over to do advanced research to get the monthly lifestyle experience points. And then let's go ahead and start this war up to get another county. Just trying to increase our power overall because, you know, we're, we're very weak at the moment. And so exposed. I mean, that's the reason why we had to do that alliance there. Oh wow, look at all the territory that the Byzantines lost. Yeah, that is noticeable. So he won his war there, clearly. Alright, so let's go ahead and get our troops moved over to here. 
raise them all up in that location and currently we have this guy in charge here and I think it's the best option since he's got that military engineer trait let's speed this whole thing up all right so this would be a victory do we have enough troops though to win the battle and then do the siege and also take the attrition I don't know we'll have to see we do have the siege weapons and he's got this the military engineer so we might be able to complete this fairly quickly before those uh, the attrition affects us too much. Uh, we're not able to sway him, unfortunately. And a neighboring ruler lost his war over here. So let's go and speed this up a bit, since it's not a difficult conflict. So we're losing a little bit of money. It's not much. Buildings are expensive, but I think we could afford one. So we'll take a look at getting one constructed in a minute. Let's just take a look at the, the battle here. Let's see how our knights did. So again, our half-brother, an acclaimed knight, was the hero here killing the most. Oh, it looks like he was slain by our brother this knight. Good job. If I had some titles, I was going to say I'd give them to him, but I guess we got another son that needs, needs titles as well. This will give us a free barony, though, so something to consider. Alright, so while I was in the castle town with Afridan, this is our younger son, his attention was caught by a criminal chained in the pillory. I guess we don't really need to read this since we know what it is. It's a trade event. Uh, so we can get him the arrogant trait, the compassionate, or the callous. Currently he's shy. Do we want to take distress to get him one of these other two? Remember he's going down that learning education. I mean, it makes sense when going down to learning to go with compassionate. We're going to take distress, whatever. We'll do an activity, guys, once we finish the war to reduce the stress some. Uh, for now, let's get something constructed. Uh, we already have the hamlets constructed in the capital, increasing taxes. Might want something for our men-at-arms since we have the tax one. We are also a very poor ruler, so getting another tax bonus would be nice to have two. Um, this one here gives you heavy cav damage and toughness. We don't have heavy, heavy cav at the moment, but what help us later? You get a fort level, decreased danger, and more taxes, more garrison as well, so it's just overall harder to siege it. So maybe we'll go with that one. We also have gone with the hospice, but we're going to do the trade port because this gives you more taxes and the development growth, which we really, really want. And so that's 150. Spend a little bit of money there, get that constructed to improve our capital bit. So he's going to keep on attacking us here, and that's what causes the problem there. And our rival died. Yeah, I forgot to look at friends and rivals that we started with. I think he, he only started with the one rival. And so he's dead. Reduced our stress by a little bit, which is getting a bit higher now. Yeah, this is where you get the problems with the sieges. As of right now, it's 12 months to complete. If we lose too many more troops, we won't be able to do it. Uh, we did capture somebody, but uh, isn't giving us any bonus. We already have the 50% for winning the battles, so these battles are not helping us. Now, given he only has 30 dudes at the moment, but it'll keep increasing those and then doing those attacks. Let's just hope that our manpower stays up high enough for us to finish the siege. Because I don't have to rotate troops in and out, because it's just, uh, you know, it's a pain in the butt to do it. Could bring an ally in, but again, we don't want to spend the, pres the prestige for that. I don't think that's the best use of it for such a small conflict. And, you know, it's more prestigious to get control of it on our own. Uh, so we are being called into conflict here. This is one of the more minor marriages we did. And so he's going to war with this guy. They're about similar power. Let's see where this guy is at. Okay. So yeah, he just got a couple little territories over here. We'll, we'll join the conflict. It's a liberty war, so this is probably one of his vassals, I suppose. Um, we'll go ahead and accept it so we don't get the, the penalties. But we're not going to help out in that conflict. It's uh, very minor. And I don't really care about the results of it. We got our own distractions over here. And it looks like we should be able to finish this. We didn't take so much attrition that uh, we didn't have the numbers. We have a larger army than I was uh, dealing with before. Or a little bit larger. But also this fortification, I want to say isn't as large as the one over here. In fact, it's the same size. And finally, we got one of our spouses pregnant. This is the princess. 
About time. It took a while, didn't it, for having three spouses. A little surprised with that. Not that we exactly need more children, but, you know, we only have two right now. Uh, we're, we were successful in our attempt to sway that count. And we did finish up our conflict as well. That's all we had to do was take take that over. Uh, so this is going to force our demands. That gets us three, well, I should say, gets us the, the one county and the two baronies. So we'll want to grant one of these baronies out. Uh, so this is actually a temple building. However, because we're Muslim, we can hold the temples. Unlike Christian characters, we don't have to worry about, you know, having clergy members and them holding that territory. We want to move this over to here. Although, can't do it yet. We need to give it a second for it to register that it's not part of our territory. But yeah, I think we'll, we'll grant this one out. That makes the most sense. So we could just grant it to... could give it to our brother. Make him a baron. I feel like he is uh, deserving of one. Of course, once we lose the county, though, you know, when probably when we die, or if we try to hand it out to another son, now this would probably be the first one I'd give out. Yeah, if we give it out, though, then we lose access to him. So, like, let's say we die and our son takes over, he wouldn't have his uncle to help him rule. So that's something to consider. But I do want to give him a, a title, so... And he's a claimed knight, so he can only hold a barony level title. I don't know if that would cause any problems with a temple holding, though. Hmm, yeah, I don't know about that, guys. Might not want to do that. Because I don't know if the temple holding would cause issues for uh, an acclaimed knight. So instead, let's grant it to like a really competent character. Maybe somebody who could handle one of these, these jobs. Could also give it to this guy. Since we already have him in the, the marshal position. Yeah, maybe that's the best option. And to reward him for his service to us? Yeah, I like that idea. So let's go and do that, guys. Though, again, that would cause problems with uh, him taking over that knightly position, but I guess that's a problem for the future. If, in fact, this is an issue, because I don't know that it would be. So we're just going to grant him that one. Get us back under the limit there. And then if it is an issue, then that should be affected right away, you would think. Like, that we should be able to just go in here and see if he's been removed. Hey, he's still in there. I guess as long as it's a barony rank title, even if it's a temple, that's not a problem. Okay, so we could have gave that to our brother. Maybe we'll give him a little bit more prestigious title, though, once we have access to one. See how close our son is to coming to age, because then we'd want to give him a title as well. But I think he's probably going to get this one up here. And let's go and change the control over to this one. Because you got zero development here compared to nine development. Makes sense to have them over there. And we did get increased levy size in our capital. Excellent. So that's helpful. And where are we at on development? We got up to 11, moving to 12. Making some progress there. You see if there's anything here we need to be aware of. You know, we know about the, the low control, of course. Do have additional wars we could do. Uh, because we now have a new border. So we could declare war on Georgia, but uh, we definitely need to call our allies in for that conflict. So you'd need to have the prestige. If I'm not mistaken, I believe we need 750 prestige to be able to pull him into a conflict. Now, his numbers aren't that much higher than ours, but again, the problem is it sieges. Your numbers get hit too hard. And then you can't do the siege. Because it's just such a small, small army. Though that those numbers are going up. 1900. Uh, might be better to invest in some men-at-arms, though. We haven't done much when it comes to the men-at-arms. So, yeah, maybe we should invest in those a bit more. And we did have another son. All right, excellent. So, that's good, because that's down that line. Uh, that Turkish line where we have the, the uh, marriage with them. So, yeah, it's good we had a son here. And I think we're going to name him Yazid. Although it would make sense to name him after his grandfather. Although, we're going to just do Arslan. Yeah, name him after, after him. Yeah, let's do that. And these two can get married. Alright. Remember, she's got the intelligent trait. 
And I was looking for the alliance with this guy. He only has 297 dudes. And that's not, uh, I don't know if that granted us. Let's take a look. Yeah, we now have the alliance with him. But yeah, that's, that's obviously not going to help us. Any kind of conflicts. And uh, we got another wife pregnant. This is our other one, our primary wife. So we're getting down to business now with the uh, the spouses. Uh, so we did get the small harbor constructed. Excellent, so that's more money. And you can see that that has already stepped up there, so we're earning a bit more every month. Let me just take a look at our armies. I think we should increase these guys, increase their size a bit. You can see it hits us hard on the monthly income though. So I probably don't want to go any further than that. But we do need larger armies, guys. Getting up to at least 2,000, geez. Yeah, it's, it's just too small otherwise. Increase his opinion further. Might want to do it one more time if we can do it successfully. It's at 60%, so might want to cancel. That's not a good, good chance of being successful there. Is there anybody on our council we might want to boost opinions with? How about our, our marshal and recent uh, baron? Go ahead and sway him. Did that pop up over here? It did. Of course it did. Alright, so we got the, the map event. So somebody is attempting to kill us. You can say thank you for bringing this to my attention. We'll become more vigilant. Or throw him in the dungeon. Well, does he have any money? <laughs> he does have money since he just took that money for making the map. He did draw the, the map for somebody. That, that is a crime. It would get us stressed though, unfortunately. It's really not worth the money. It's a little. I don't even know if you could ransom them out for that much. I think it would only be 10 to the 15. Is this the next trait? Lustful. So could I have him go for that instead of the greedy? Why not? Because yeah, we don't want to take any more stress here. Uh, so with the next thing that we're going to be purchasing... Oh, that Liberty War was a defeat. Okay, well, I wasn't going to go down there and help him with that. Uh, we got another Diplomacy perk. Still have not gotten to reset our perks yet. So let's go ahead and do the Heart of the Family. Let's uh, increase the opinion with any close family. Could have done the August one as well. I mainly wanted this one here. Yeah, I think that's what we might do. Once we go down the, uh, once we reset our perks and take all these and get all the way down to the bottom. If we ever do that. Our character is now like 40 years old. <laughs> I still haven't done it yet. We gotta get rid of the stress, guys. I don't wanna do it when we have 49 stress already. So, an activity is something we should do soon. Cradled by death. Uh oh. She's having problems in the birthing chamber. So, as I wait outside the birthing chamber, each minute feels like a lifetime. Khadijah's screams have ceased, but no infant's cry replace it. Something is wrong. I can feel it in my bones. The door opens. The midwife's wretched expression confirms all my fears. I'm so very sorry, my lord. Lady Khadijah, your daughter, they are both in heaven now. So that was our, our daughter. So our wife died in childbirth. And our daughter was stillborn. And we just got a ton of stress from that. As you'd expect. Okay, so the princess now becomes our new primary spouse. And we can at least see if we need to have more than two spouses. Seems we don't unless that needs an update. But yeah, very, very unfortunate, guys. We'll take a look. We need to change her job up. Currently, she's given us seven points. And that's in everything. You could really just focus on managed domain to get that stewardship up some. Uh, the two plus the marshal does help though. I mean, all of our skills kind of suck. But yeah, we could do that to get a bit more money. So yeah, we'll change, change her over to that. That alliance did expire as well. Since uh, our wife died. But, you know, obviously we didn't help him with his conflict. Nor would we call him into any of our own conflicts. So who's this high chieftain over here? Well, yeah, I guess we do border him, don't we? He has similar troop numbers there. So you could attack him. 
And then we got this guy who's uh, far more powerful, so obviously we would not want to be attacking him. So those are all our choices at the moment for conflicts. Georgia's certainly get more powerful. So this guy does look like he'd be the weakest. You could just take over this county here. I wasn't really planning on going north. We want to go south, but obviously that's not an option. Not until something happens here. Uh, the status has to change, or we have to get powerful enough. So we need a power base, build number troop numbers if we ever want to rival him and his 21,000 troops. Yeah, you gotta get a much larger power base. Uh, let's go and take a look at these activities, see which one you might want to do in order to reduce our stress. So as far as our character traits, since that does impacts the, the amount of stress we're gonna lose, you know, we're not a hunter yet, but we can eventually get the hunter trait. And that helps with the stress reduction. I well, guess this is another thing they've added is funerals. So you can do a funeral for your loved ones. Helps you reduce some of the stress. But it's saying we don't have a body. Now, everybody can only be buried once, obviously. Or whatever you do with them, they have different ways to, to deal with bodies. You know, maybe you do a cremation or whatever. Uh, but, yeah, uh, I think that maybe her father did it or something because it's saying that you do not have an available body to bury. So if a character does it before you, then yeah, you won't have, have the option. Let me just take a look and see why it's not, yeah, okay. So I'm guessing somebody else already did it. We didn't do it quick enough. Might have been wise, that would have been a good reduction of stress there. So we'll have to do something else. Uh, we could do a feast or hunt. That's basically our, our best options. I don't really feel like this character is the hunting type. <laughs> He's not a uh, high prowess. He just doesn't seem like a hunting type. So let's go ahead and have him do a feast instead and uh, we'll focus on reducing stress. Though we don't actually have the money to do anything elaborate here. I'll see if if we reduced it some if that would... I mean we're, we're sitting at 94 right now. So we could even bring it a little bit cheaper I think this is probably fine. We'll do it in our capital. We're not really doing it for the opinion or prestige gain, so keeping those at level two and, and having a cheaper feast would be a good idea here. And yeah, just keep it at the recreation. Try and reduce stress. We're not leaving our capital, so don't need a caravan master. That saves us some money. Let's go and start the feast up. And this will grant us some prestige as well, which we need more. Uh, if we want to be able to make use of our, our powerful ally in wars. All right, so welcome friends. I have a feast in my house. Uh, I did everything I could ensuring that Issa and Sina would be far from each other as possible. It was not enough, and now they've come to blows in the middle of my feast. One of my guards is close to the brawl and looks to me for the order to intervene. So, uh, this guy's just, he has trouble with everybody. Now he's constantly getting into problems with our, our son as well. So we can throw Sina out to cool off, or instead restrain Issa. Who is this character here? Oh, he's just some random character. Or, uh, because of our diplomacy skill, we can say halt. We'll talk about this later and get some prestige. I think that's the best option, so we'll go with that. A pleasing atmosphere, so this is an event that happens for many feasts. And, uh, you know, our purpose here is to lose stress. So we want to do that. And this would be the time to go ahead and reset. Because it's 110 and we only have 89. So we still have really high stress. But yeah, definitely this is the moment to, to go ahead and reset the perks. So go ahead and do that now. So I think we're going to go with the August one. So we'll be able to knock out many of these. So that's going to give us some more prestige. We don't have any dread, I don't think, so that helps us. But monthly prestige for night. Overall, this is what this is about, is getting more prestige. But uh, the offer of vassalization acceptance is helpful, though I don't think there's any, any options for that. Commission Epic. And we have two left, so we're gonna get these two. All right, so that'll increase our diplomacy even further. Although, do we even have a level of fame? I'm not entirely sure that's gonna help us much. Uh, so we're one away from getting that perk there. And so, where is our event? Let's go ahead and make sure we take this 110 stress reduction and get us out of the critical stress level before we even get any penalties there. Alright, so we got a new event, the right woman for the job. Alright, so this is about our spouse here. The spouse we've had for the longest amount of time. 
This gives you that household efforts and we lose even further stress. Uh, we got a hook on our sister-in-law as well, since uh, when we married our, our half-brother. More stress reduction and the life reaffir reaffirmed, so increasing health and increasing stress gain. Or I should say reducing stress gain. All right, so with that all done, uh, we lose more stress, we gain legitimacy, we gain prestige and opinion. It's very helpful and also the uh, capital gets increased development growth and popular opinion, so nice to do that. I never throw enough feast in my campaigns. I guess I don't do activities enough outside of the big grand ones. We do the big grand ones all the time. The little ones like the hunts and the feast, I often don't do those enough. So I'll try and do them a bit more in this campaign. We were also able to sway this character, so his opinion is very high now. And so there's really no reason to keep trying to sway him. I mean, everybody really likes us now after that feast. Could work on our spouse. Could even attempt to romance her instead. Maybe we'll do that. Yeah, you know what? We could also demand her conversion. She's not likely to accept, so maybe you romance her first, and then you demand her conversion. That'd make more sense. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and romance her. Although a 0% chance of success. Oh, her traits do not gel well with ours. Deceitful dislikes just. Wrathful dislikes calm and patient. And stubborn likes patient. So you get the points for that. But not a high chance of success here. Good God, it's 0%. I mean, maybe you can still do it. I did not realize that we uh, had such negative traits there in regards to each other. You could seduce her, make her your lover. 45% chance of success, so a little bit higher. Yeah, I guess we could do that. Yeah, we'll try that. See if we can't make that happen. Maybe once you make her your lover, it'd be a little bit easier to uh, romance her. And we actually got a claim on this chiefdom here, which is the one I wanted anyways. So yeah, we could declare war for that. And just need to get our troop numbers up, or we have a, the prestige that we could pull in our ally, but if we were to do that, we'd want to make sure he's not in a conflict, which at the moment he's not. So now would be a fantastic time. We don't have a lot of money, but we've reduced our stress. That's not an issue anymore. So yeah, let's, let's go ahead and do the war now, guys. Could do the war here in Ge uh, Georgia as well. Because this one would be a little bit easier overall, so you might be able to win it yourself, especially if you've already won this conflict here. Um, can we take an entire duchy over? Not yet. Our fame is just not high enough. So we can only do the county. Could do the holy war and use the piety, but I just feel like piety is too useful, and instead it's just better to do it for the, the counties. So I think we're going to go for that county, and then we're going to pull in our our ally. Hopefully he accepts. Because this is 98 prestige and then I, I'm, I'm hoping it's 750. Uh, we're about to find out if that's correct or not. Alright, so let's do a war against Queen Martha. And uh, we're going to pull in the Sultan. He would accept it is 750. Alright, excellent. So let's go ahead and call him to this conflict. And we don't need to, to pull in this ally. <laughs> I don't think it's 297 dudes. They're going to be that helpful. And is there anything else we need to do here? Uh, could do the wet nurse. If we start having children here, I mean, that would be helpful if we got some young children in our court to have one. Uh, we do have our younger son, I guess. Yeah, might want to hire him. I know we just started this war and that cost money, but yeah, I think hiring a wet nurse makes sense. And we're going to have our sister-in-law do that. She has a very good aptitude. So we put her, put her into that position. She gets paid more than the doctor. I mean, it's an important position, but geez. So is the doctor. There's a lot of other great minor court positions as well. But obviously money is an issue, so we can't really hire anybody there. Uh, we do got this prisoner here in house arrest. Was that the guy I defeated in battle? I think he's somebody we defeated in that battle. So he could have been ransomed a while ago. I didn't have any money. You just take the two gold. He's probably better to use him as a warrior, though. Recruit him. 
Because yeah, he'd be a decent knight. And uh, I don't think we have a great crop of knights here. Yeah, look at the bottom rung of our knights. So we'll want him to accept that before we raise up our troops so that he'll be one of our knights. He has no choice but to accept, of course. All right, so we'll go ahead and move our troops over to here. Uh, he has a location to invade from, so he can invade from right there. Hopefully he gets his troops. I'm just looking to see if he's raised them up yet. Not seeing them yet. You'd think he'd raise up close, but he might have just had another war start. No. No war yet. Okay, that's them. For whatever reason, it didn't look like an allied army for me. But he's right there. Okay, just wanted to make sure everything's good there. Uh, we did get a favor hook. Okay. So she's coming in here. Uh, we're going to want to fight her in the hills. She might get there before we can even raise those troops up. Not entirely sure. So, yeah, I might have took a little bit too long to get these get these raised. It was saving us money. If this province borders this one, which it sure looks like it does, then she might be able to get to there before we even got them raised up all the way. I'm not entirely sure how long it would take. Might not take a long time. We can always stop them from being raised, I suppose. Yeah, let's let's just try this out, guys. It's gonna be five days. She's not getting here that quickly. We should be good. Yeah, she's attacking there. Let me just see when she's gonna get here. Fourteen days. So now she decided not to. Now that we have the full troops here, we actually outnumber her, and we're in the hills. So yeah, she didn't want none of it. So now we gotta try and get her engaged in battle. In favorable terms though we do have a good general here and I don't know how she looks on well she's got way more men at arms than we do so our general is better than Queen Martha but remember she does get those five points for you know commanding her own troops but even then our general's still better I don't know if she has any traits not to look at it uh, but she has less knights She's got the spearmen, which don't counter anything that we've got. So our heavy infantry will counter those spearmen, while her archers would counter our light infantry. We do not have spearmen to counter the light cav. Okay, so yeah, I really don't know how that would go. If you attack here, would you get the river? Yeah, you get the river penalty. Said we'd win. She's uh, five years in debt. That's a huge penalty to her. So here it's saying that we definitely win, despite crossing the river, but let's just avoid crossing the river. Well, you gotta fight her in the hills in that case. Let's go over here. I should have just fought her there. She's gonna sit in the hills, but maybe you can get her over here in the plains. Cause she might be stuck there now. Let me see if we can't get over there. No, we just weren't quick enough. Okay. So yeah, she's kind of bouncing back and forth here. She's heading over to the mountains. Okay, so you could do the siege here in the plains. We have enough troops, so we'd start taking attrition, of course, and she'd probably attack us. Uh, but our ally is on his way, so it's not really a concern. Let's go and start doing the siege rather than chasing her around and fighting her in territory that's terrain that's favorable to her. You gotta do the sieges anyways. So let's let our ally, who we spent all that prestige to bring into the conflict, let's let him go fight her. All right, maybe he'll just do the siege. I don't know. Currently, we're at nine months to finish our siege. He would do his in 21. He has so many troops, he can chase her down and do the siege. And so, I mean, it's like a sure thing we're going to win. It was really just a matter of, could we get the, you know, the prestigious battle? Get the victory there. But our numbers are so similar. But she had those huge penalties, so we probably would have won, even on the hills. So I think we'd be fine if we attacked her on the hills. And the mountain, eh, there's really no reason to give her that bonus. Uh, Master of Words. So this is us attempting to, to romance our spouse here. I remember looking at her. She's deceitful, wrathful, and stubborn. She's a tough soldier. So we can compliment her brave, unfettered spirit. Her noble and loyal nature. Yeah, not really loyal, it seems. Unparalleled, breathtaking beauty. Or assertive, powerful presence. You know, I feel like she'd really like this one, honestly. I feel like that's the one that she would like. We're gonna go with that one. And it's well received, as expected. We know our wife. 
All right, so our siege has got seven months to completion. We can speed this up here. And her army is now wiped out. And she's already been captured, so the war's over. Do we want to wait for the siege? Probably not. That's not enough money to justify what we're currently paying. Let's just go and end this conflict. So just like that, and this is the advantage of having those powerful allies. I mean, the prestige gets you, but uh, yeah, you have those powerful allies, and then you can use them for your conflicts. Now you can't just overly use them when prestige gain is so low. It's going to take us a while to get back up to to the 750, unless we get some favorable event or do some type of activity. And maybe get it back up, and then you can do uh, immediately do another war. And he is the agent of his own demise, the future of his own demise, I should say, like uh, the demise of his dynasty, because he's over helping us get in territory, which is just making us more powerful, and we'll eventually use that to destroy them. Although, honestly, they're gonna have to get weakened some before we can do that. We need them to like fall apart due to uh, probably a succession or something like that, is I think our only hope, because uh, building up enough power to, to rival him in this kind of poor territory yeah, that's going to take a lot, guys. My tax collector, Guzadahum, provides a report of his latest survey of the realm and outlines a matter of great concern. My liege, the way that Vali Mamum manages his lands is completely unacceptable. Much more could be done with the lands of Durbant should they have a competent caretaker. So you can say, remind all my vassals of the responsibilities. That'll get us 5% uh, more tax. Say, I'll teach him a thing or two myself. That's a stewardship challenge that we're likely to fell in. Perhaps a more physical reminder of my authority is in order. Yeah, probably not going to go with that option. Let's just do this. Get a nice little 5% tax bonus. Now, just to show you guys with the tax jurisdictions uh, jurisdiction here, it does automatically uh, put those taxpayers in there for you. So all three of these guys are in his tax jurisdiction. Now you could move those out if we wanted to, change them around. Uh, like if you wanted to put them under tax decrees, that might be one reason why you might want to change it up. Just take a look at the, the other tax decrees because we didn't really we didn't really look at these much. So some of the other options. So you have this one here, which grants you a lot more taxes, but you don't get the, the levies bonus that we're getting with that one. And then you also get the domain taxes plus 1%. So overall, it's just uh, very financially helpful. And your vassal will have lower opinion of you. They're not happy about you taking so much money from them. But they will increase their piety. So if you had a vassal that you really just want to rip off, then that would be one option. This one results in you giving up a lot of your taxes and levies in order to get increased men-in-arms damage. And it doesn't look like much at 1%. Remember, that's for every vassal that you have there. So we'd get a 3% bonus. If you had the full 12 vassal, that's a 12% bonus to men-in-arms damage. That's uh, significant for all of your men-in-arms. But your vassal will also get some bonuses. You'll get the increased opinion with them, and their men-in-arms will be cheaper to recruit and uh, cheaper maintenance as well. The Ghazi status, the Warriors of the Faith and the Frontier. This one is going to give up levies. It's all about that piety. But you do get increased monthly income while at war. The vassal pays less piety to use the Holy War CBs but more prestige for other ones. So a pretty solid one, honestly, because piety is so helpful. And uh, monthly income while at war, this is the primary time that you need increased income, so not a bad one there. Uh, the Jesus status, that is only for, uh, you know, characters that are a different religion, so it wouldn't apply to any of our current vassals. And then the last one here, you're giving up a lot of taxes and levies to instead get uh, prestige. Yeah, I mean, it could be a very nice bonus overall for prestige, but I guess you're kind of helping your vassals too because you're increasing their development growth. So you're developing your territory, which eventually results in you getting more taxes and levies from them. But, but yeah, I, I kind of like this one. It's giving you that nice 15%. I don't like the, the losing of the prestige, but generally we have lots of prestige. You know, getting prestige for your vassals, I suppose, could end up being a problem. Uh, this one here is great just for the money, but and then your your uh, vassals are unhappy with you. So I think we're just going to leave it as is for now because what we really need is money. But what we, we might want to do in the future is kind of rotate our vassals around, change up their, you know, which tax collector they're under. And we actually have too much territory now. Okay, so we need to, to deal with that. So we got two territories here. 
one of them being just a, a barony. This is the, the temple holding. So we probably want to grant that one out. And then I think we're going to grant this, uh, this one as well, this barony. I think that makes sense. And that's the one we're going to give to our brother. I feel like he deserves a title, so we're going to give him this barony. And so he should be happy with us there, though he did take his wife, so we no longer have her as a wet nurse, which is unfortunate. Uh, I think we might actually have to to search for one, because I don't think there's anybody else. I could, I could take a look real quick. I want to say I didn't see anybody in there that could do that position. Yeah, there's nobody. Okay, so we'd have to, to search for a wet nurse if we want to have one. So why not? We'll do the search. Find somebody else to take that position. Uh, and then we need to find somebody to take this temple position. Let's see if we've got anybody here. We could also do a noble of the Persian culture. Or if we wanted to increase the cultural acceptance of the, the Georgians, we could instead do a local of their their culture. I could also appoint a knight who served as well. Just take a look if there's anybody in here. Might want to give that position to. Well, there's this guy. He's actually in the list there. He's a lowborn young guy, 33. Pretty good. And he could still serve as a knight as, as the Baron here. Why not? Yeah, we'll grant that territory to him. So we just want, I don't want to give him the whole thing here. Let's take a look. Am I like clicking on the wrong one? Is there not two? Let's take a look here. We just want to grant him this one. Might be better to do it in here. Okay, it's that one. So we'll give him this, this title. That'll get us back down to our limit here. We really need to get that limit up. And you know, if we didn't have the increased domain limit from that setting, the game rule, then we would uh, only be able to hold four. All right, so these are our options. She's got good aptitude, would cost us 55. She has poor, would cost us only 30. We're gonna take the one with a good aptitude. She's 27 years old. Could marry her to one of our knights or something. I'm hesitant to do so because we might end up giving them territory and then he takes another another midwife away from us. Loyalty or fear? So my vassals owe me their allegiance. My word is law. But how much is obedience without devotion worth? In times of crisis, a slow response or a half-hearted effort can lead to disaster. Can I afford such a risk? So we say, I'll win their unwavering loyalty, decreasing taxes, but getting increased opinion. So you say, fear is a far more effective tool. We'll gain dread. Uh, also, we'll get some stress because we're just. And then we're going to wound our own son. It's always your own son that you attack. I know he's one of our more powerful vassals, but I mean, it seems like every time we get these events, it's always our own son. Or we say, I have more important women to impress. And Queen Martha will get increased opinion with us. Hmm. I don't really like any of these options, honestly. I guess we'll go with that one. Because yeah, I don't really want to give it taxes for opinion that we don't need. Seems like everybody likes us. I mean, we have a good diplomacy. That's what we're focused on, so... I don't think it's ne uh, necessary to do that. Building construction time has been reduced. Doesn't help us because we're not uh, constructing. We don't have any money. And there was a building that was disabled there temporarily, but that's fine now. Do we want to move this? Well, if we keep moving it, and besides, this is the higher development anyway, so we want to keep them there, but if we keep moving it, then you never get it all the way up to 100. Uh, we can negotiate an alliance with a brother. Let's go and do that. Excellent. Do we have him on our council at all? Because he might be considered a powerful vassal now. Well, it looks like just these two characters are currently, neither of which do we want to give a position to. I think our council's fine as is. I'm going to continue increasing control, doing the disrupt schemes, and increase development. And the foreign affairs, do we want to do that or do we want to move the domestic? Yeah, let's do domestic. Because I don't think there's anybody else that we can... I mean, I can take a look at this character if he would be willing to become a vassal. Well, no, he's Christian, so you're going to get a, a huge penalty from that. And despite the penalty, it's actually not as, as bad 
as you'd expect here. Could be much, much worse. Different uh, vassalization screen there, of course, because he's not a clan. Hmm. Yeah, I'll probably just conquer that guy, right? It wouldn't be that difficult to conquer. Yeah, I think that would make the most sense. We don't need to bring anybody else in. He does have an ally. Let me just take a look who this is, how far away he is. 456 dudes, pretty far. This guy doesn't have a lot to, to begin with. Our numbers are down again. Hmm. Must have lost like a modifier that we were getting at some point. But yeah, I think we're going to declare war on that guy. Get him conquered. Our spy master has come to us with grave news. While we do not yet know who, someone is plotting to kill my guess. Okay. We take a look at gas to see if we want to hire any of them to be knights. As again, our, our crop of knights is pretty crappy. The problem is money. Uh, we, we do have consistent issues with the finances. It's always going to be the case when you're a smaller, weaker ruler, though. We are starting to get more powerful here, guys. Now, as far as kingdoms that we can we can form, if we just take a look. Like just at the kingdom that's that's here. Let's say you go into the, the duchy title. So this is the kingdom that we're in. So we got to attack them to get the Dalem kingdom. Well, there are additional kingdoms. As you can see, there's the Georgian one, the Arminian one. We've got territory in the Caucasus. So there are some other kingdoms that we could try and form instead. Uh, this one would also require us to go to war with the Seljuks. So we'll be able to do that. But Georgia would be a realistic option. Take Queen Martha's throne. Uh, we finally got that level of devotion. Excellent. So we now are faithful. Increase in opinion with uh, everybody of our religion. We also had incompetent tax collection. Okay, so that's unfortunate. But you see we do have a plague that's now close enough that the icon has popped up over here. This is the famine fever. As you can see, all the different plagues that are in the world, none are currently in our realm. The one they're concerned about is this one here, which is getting closer to us. And you see it uh, began on the 21st of April, 1073, and it's already killed 19 characters. That is the number of named characters is killed, so not like total people. If you count like peasants, they're probably dying, but actual named characters. But it's a strain of, of typhus. It's a minor one. So you have like different types of minor, major, and apocalyptic. These are the affecting modifiers here. So the ones that affect the characters and the ones that affect the baronies and the counties. Yeah, you'll see it spread throughout the realm. And we'll get some different options available to us. Either to close our gates to our capital, try and protect the capital, or to seclude ourselves and our family, try and protect our characters. We got a letter from this chieftain. He's just north of us here. And... He's part of this larger Khan's territory. And he uh, has learned Iranian. Impressive. Send my regards. Could just get some prestige as well. Form a rivalry with them. That would always be an option. Uh, apparently we need to appoint another tax collector because uh, when we appointed our... Oh yeah, that, that makes sense. Uh, we appointed a brother to that, so now we need somebody else in here. And we don't have a third person for this. So we'll just have to put... Now, I'm kind of sick of Issa here, so we're going to put our, our doctor in charge here. Uh, that's for the one that's actually uh, doing the taxing. And so you see that dip in income we were getting already. And our wife is pregnant again. Excellent. So yeah, we'll have to see if this gets to our borders. And then we'll need to, to react if it does. And maybe uh, seclude our capital or something. Or our characters. Well, you can't seclude your capital, but you know what I mean. Close the gates. Uh, so our younger son has finally come of age. And it looks like he did all right. Yeah, astute intellectual. Not bad at all. Okay, so he is shy, compassionate, and lustful. And we already know what position we're going to be granting him. Uh, we're going to give him this county up here. The least impressive. The development is now up higher. Control is still low. Maybe he can work on that for us. I'd like to get one more. I know this isn't granting us much here. You get a little bit of money and a little bit of levies though, so I'd like to first get something else before we grant that to him. Uh, so this is another romance attempt here with our, 
our wife. So we can say, join me in the circle for the next dance, my lady. We're appealing to her playful side. She's not really the most playful type. We say, a walk in the garden away from all this. That's her thoughtful side. Or could I provide you with some more food? Her greedy side. Or have you seen these people dance? Her malicious side. Yeah, it feels like the malicious side is uh, the one she'd want to go with. Let's go with that. I'm going to make fun of them. We sat together making one joke after another about the other guests. I had not expected her to be quite so skilled in the art of mockery. No, I absolutely did expect it. And so we have smoldering chemistry. You know, we're throwing smolders at each other. Got a diplomacy perk. Excellent. Remember, we are one perk away from getting the finisher trait. This, of course, increases our diplomacy by two, our martial by one, and one plus prestige per month. So when you look at what our prestige gain, that's a lot, because we don't get all that much right now. So yeah, it's very good to have our diplomacy is now at 21, Marshall's at six, so pretty low. Not a great, not great when it comes to the Marshall skill there. Well, maybe it was the death of our, our primary spouse there that impacted our, our soldier numbers. Yeah, I think the, the next conflict would be against this guy. He's an easy, easy count we can pick on. With no vassal and not really a powerful ally to speak of. So yeah, I think we'd attack him next. Uh, this guy, he died, and I'm guessing this is his son that took over. And he actually has increased numbers from what he had before. She's looking incredibly weak. This is somebody trying to replace her on the throne, probably because she lost that war, and so I bet her legitimacy is low. She's also dealing with the Peasant Rebellion. That legitimacy is pretty important for that, with the claimant uh, factions. We're very close to getting up to level 5. Getting there, that's ordains, and that gives you a huge renown bonus. So that'd be really nice to have, because we still have not yet gotten a, a bonus yet here for our, our dynasty. We do have new unity decisions. Yeah, we haven't gotten a, a legacy just yet. We're very close. Getting there. Man, yeah, we have some decisions here we can take a look at, because we do actually have piety if we wanted to use it. So this is enforced bailiffs. This is going to get us some increased control. That would be very helpful because yeah, we are got several places we're trying to increase control for. Also, gives you higher popular opinion. That's not bad. It does cost money though, not just piety. So it's kind of expensive. You could also do this one again. You know what? This is different from the one that we did before. This is encourage the economy. So rulers will adopt the builder economical uh, archetype and it increases their st stewardship. I assume this makes them more likely to build. Yeah. That's what they're going to spend their gold on. So you could do that. I like that you can kind of control what the AI is doing. That's that's really cool. It's a shame that this is only available for the, the, uh, the clan countries. Like, this is something I think should be available for all, I don't know, all houses. We can promote development. So that would not only increase development growth, but also reduce the cost of construction. But this one also has a cost to it. Still might be worth it. And you can educate the youth in mosques. So all young men living in the capital have a chance of increasing their learning skill and gaining the novice physician experience for the next 20 years. And you also get this modifier. Increasing lifestyle experience points and the zealot vassal opinion. That's not going to cost you that much. It's just uh, half the piety of these other ones, and you don't have a financial cost. So that's a pretty good one, too. I don't know. We're going to take a look and, and probably do one of those. Uh, we also need to try and get the house unity up higher. I think we're still working on that. I think it's slowly increasing. I believe that lasted for 10 years. We need to get it up to 160, so 14 more points. And so we should be able to get that to the next level, hopefully before our character dies. Currently 43 years old, so we do got a lot of time. And so that should ensure that our son inherits the, the most territory possible. So 75% of all of our titles. Uh, we do have that additional son who's going to need titles. Currently he's set to inherit two of our counties. He would get two, and he would get two. So not really the way we want this to look, and I think the reason why... He's not getting the 50% is because he already has a county. And so it's counting that one. And so currently he has three. Still though, I think it's got to be counting the, the main duchy title. Because out of the counties, that would be three of seven. 
So yeah, it's got to be counting the duchy title. So he's getting four of the eight total titles. So we need to get to the harmonious house unity so we can ensure that he inherits 75% of all our titles. So yeah, next episode we'll do this war, this little conflict. I'm also tempted to invade her and take some. Though I guess we still have the, uh, yeah, we still would have the peace treaty. So that would likely be violating that. And yeah, the truce. So you can't do that right now. He's looking more powerful. He's got more troops than we do, so you gotta use some prestige to get the ally in. So it just makes sense to, to attack this little guy and pick on him. And he does have more troops now than he did, though. But still, even with his ally, we outnumber him. And this is in the, the plains as well. Now you got the hill problems. I guess you'd have to bite in the hills. So you'd get that bonus, but yeah, we should be able to easily take him out. So this winter, so maybe we'll wait till that's over anyways. But that's what we'll be doing next episode, is we're going to take over that little county. And so then we'll be able to grant a county to our uh, second son, our middle son. Which he'll just get this shameful northern one, since we're not really getting much out of it. I hope you guys did enjoy today's episode. If you did, make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. I do hope to see you on the next one, and thanks for watching.